all the choices out there with polytubing and its fittings can be overwhelming. Let's go over what you need to get started to use polytubing in your drip irrigation system. For drip irrigation, we typically use black polytubing. Although black polytubing is the most common, there's also white tubing available. For the average DIYer, white tubing is really only necessary for aesthetics, like for running some tubing up to hanging baskets or a misting system on your patio or deck. If you're growing in a greenhouse or nursery, white polytubing is great because it reflects sunlight keeping water cooler and reducing algae growth, while also reflecting light to help plants grow, making it ideal for controlled environments. Both white and black polytubing are UV resistant, meaning they can be used above ground and last for many years without degradation. Polytubing is reasonably flexible and quite easy to work with, but you'll probably want to set it in the sun for about an hour before unrolling it. This will help prevent the tubing from tangling and make it even easier to work with. All you really need to work with and cut polytubing is a pair of scissors. Now, if you're using sizes larger than one half inch, such as three quarter inch or one inch, a pair of tubing cutters like this can come in handy. Polytubing is available in a wide variety of sizes. Most commonly, we see anything from one eighth inch up to one inch being used. The smaller sizes, the eighth inch and the quarter inch, or what you often hear referred to as microtubing or spaghetti tubing. If you hear those terms, it's gonna be one of those two. Spaghetti tubing is most often used in short lengths with an emitter installed at the end of that length to deliver water to one or more plants. The larger sizes of tubing, one half inch to one inch, are most often used as main lines to deliver water to the smaller sizes of polytubing, drip line, and drip tape. Choosing your tubing diameter will primarily depend on the length of the main line and the amount of water that flows through the emitters connected to it. For a quarter inch main line, you wouldn't want it to be longer than 30 feet or have more than 30 gallons per hour going through it. For half inch, that's 200 feet and 200 gallons per hour. For three quarter inch, that's 480 feet and 480 gallons per hour. And finally for one inch, that's 960 feet and 960 gallons per hour. When sizing a main line, it's good to size up a little bit. This leaves you room for expansion and helps take care of unaccounted variables. Now, those aren't hard and fast rules, but they're based off experience and friction loss charts. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the math and other factors that go into sizing a main line, you can check out the video right there in the top right. It's a step-by-step -step guide to sizing a main line. If you'd like to just follow the general rules in main line sizing, the 30-30, 200-200 rule, keep in mind that that limitation is just for an individual length it is perfectly acceptable to have multiple lengths that add up to more. For example, if I have five 10 foot lengths of quarter inch tubing, that's a total of 50 feet. And that's okay because none of them exceed 30 feet in length. As you're installing your poly tubing, you'll probably want stakes to hold down the tubing every two to four feet as you go so the tubing stays in place. In addition to helping you during installation, without stakes, the tubing can experience significant movement when the system is turned on. This can cause the tubing to move away from the plants it is intended to irrigate and can cause the tubing to pull other parts of the system out of their carefully arranged locations. This movement can also cause clogged emitters. That's why we think tubing stakes are well worth it. There are J-wire stakes that are good for standard loamy soil, but also heavy duty U-wire stakes. U-stakes have extra holding power because they have two ends that can both drive deeply into the soil. There are also stakes with a crimp in the middle to add extra hold for tough soil conditions. Just make sure that if you choose wire stakes, they are galvanized. Non-galvanized stakes will rust and corrode. Here's an example of two stakes installed at the same time, one of them being galvanized and the other non-galvanized. If a wire stake doesn't push down in rocky soil, it might bend. To fix this, you can clip the ends off with wire cutters to make it shorter and easier to install. There are also plastic stakes that not only blend into the landscape better, but also have extra holding power in light or sandy soils. We've also found these plastic stakes are easier to install in relatively rocky soil if you have a hammer or mallet handy. For one quarter inch tubing, we highly recommend using stakes sized specifically for one quarter inch tubing since the large tubing stakes will leave too much wiggle room. Tubing clamps for both one half inch and one quarter inch can also be handy for securing tubing to your raised beds or up a post for hanging baskets. So what happens when you need to connect multiple pieces of poly tubing together or you need to move them in multiple directions or turn 90 degrees? That's where fittings come in. Fittings are what you use with your tubing to accomplish your layout. The most common fittings that you're gonna use in drip irrigation are the coupling to join two pieces together, a hose adapter to get it connected to a water source like a garden hose or a hose bib, an elbow to turn corners, a T to split in multiple directions, 
an end cap so you can close everything off so water just doesn't run out the end, an inline valve that works like an on-off switch for your irrigation system, and then we got some more rare fittings that don't see as often but still find their place, like a four-way cross if you need to split in four different directions at once, and adapters that allow you to connect different sizes of tubing together or even connect tubing to a whole different type of pipe, like PVC pipe. Fittings come in different connection types. We've got barbed insert fittings, drip lock fittings, compression fittings, the contractor's choice, and lock style fittings. Your choice of fitting type depends on cost, the time it takes to install them, ease of use, and whether you want to be able to reuse them or not. If you're new to using fittings, we generally recommend the lock style fittings. They're reusable and significantly easier to use than some of the others, particularly compression fittings, which really takes some experience to get the most out of. The video card in the top right is an in-depth look at each of the different fitting types, so you can choose one that's best for your project and your needs. For DIYers, we typically recommend the lock style fittings. The reason is because they're reusable, but mostly because of their ease of use. To use a lock style fitting, all you have to do is push the tubing to the barb, and walk it back and forth until it covers the barb. A quick tip if you're having any trouble whatsoever is to dip the tubing into some hot water. This will soften it up enough to make it very easy to walk on over the barb. Fitting compatibility corresponds directly to tubing diameter. Thus, one quarter inch tubing is compatible with one quarter inch fittings and so on. Now the one exception to this is one half inch tubing because one half inch tubing isn't standardized like the others. If you're buying your tubing and your fittings from us, you'll always be compatible unless you're using compression fittings because they're very hyper specific to what they're compatible with. A one half inch lock style fitting is always gonna be compatible with our half inch tubing. And the half inch tubing we use is one of the more common half inch sizes. If you're adding to or repairing an existing system that uses one half inch tubing, check out the video there in the top right. It's an in-depth guide that goes over half inch tubing compatibility and the various fittings. Over the years and through many irrigation cycles, you're eventually gonna have some damaged tubing. Fortunately, it's easy to repair. This is how to repair damaged poly tubing. All you have to do is cut the damaged portion out and then splice them back together with a coupling. So what if the damage is really extensive like this here where some raccoons got to it? The answer is still easy. All you'll need is two couplings and a length to splice in. So first, we're gonna to wanna to cut away the damage section so we have some nice, even clean ends to work with. Next, you'll wanna attach a coupling to each open end of the tubing. Now, I'm gonna connect the two pieces together and splice in this little bit of replacement tubing. If you punch a hole in your half inch or larger tubing that you don't need, all you have to do is fill it up with a goof plug. A quick pro tip on using goof plugs, because you are gonna be using them, is to use the larger side and use a pair of needle nose pliers to help you get the leverage to push them right in. So, how do you attach your drippers to your poly tubing? If your system is small, for example, just a couple potted plants on your deck, and you're only gonna be using quarter inch tubing, all you have to do is run the tubing over to your plant, push the dripper into the end of the tubing, and then stake it in place with a stabilizer stake. Check out the video in the top right if you wanna see a step-by-step -step guide to installing a small drip irrigation system with only quarter inch poly tubing. Now, if you're using one half inch or larger poly tubing, I'm gonna show you the two most common ways to accomplish this. But if you'd like to learn others, check out our video there in the top right or in the description below. It covers five different methods to connect and use drippers to your poly tubing, including some unique situations. Both of these methods start off the same. You simply punch a hole in your tubing using a one quarter inch punch. From there, you could simply insert a dripper into that hole if your poly tubing run is close enough to your plants. And then you're done. Your dripper is ready to deliver water directly to the roots of your plants. If your plant is a bit of distance away from your poly tubing, you can instead use a one quarter inch coupling, then attach some one quarter inch micro or spaghetti tubing to that coupling and push it in the hole you just punched. Run it over to your plant, cut it and push a dripper into the end of your micro tubing. If you're just doing a couple drippers to water a couple plants, this will be a breeze with just your hands, a simple punch, and some scissors. But if you've got a lot of them to do or a big landscape that you're trying to irrigate, there are some tools and punches and combination tool punches that will make the job much easier. There's too many to cover in this video, but if you'd like to learn all about them, check out the video there in the top right or the description below. You'll see a full step-by-step -step guide to all of our punches and cutters and tools. Now you've got your tubing laid out and your drippers connected. So how do you get water to get into your tubing and then to your drippers and then to your plants. 
That's where the head assembly comes in. The head assembly are the parts that connect your irrigation system to your water source, which is typically a hose bib. A head assembly consists of a few simple parts, like a timer, which is completely optional. Only need it if you want to automate your system. The rest of the head assembly, the parts you absolutely do need in almost all cases, is a backflow preventer to protect your potable water source from any contaminants in the irrigation system, a filter to filter out debris that might be in the water source. It's a very fine mesh filter that can get particles that are difficult to even see with your eye. And that's important for the small orifices that we see in drip emitters. And finally, a pressure regulator to lower that house pressure from anywhere from 40 to 60 PSI down to 15 to 25 PSI, depending on the drippers that you're using. The last part of the head assembly is just the adapter that connects to the outlet of your pressure regulator and then to tubing on the other end. It's just another fitting like we've already talked about. Now, one of the great things about these head assemblies is everything just screws together. Like here's the adapter that connects your tubing. All you have to do, screw it on. It's that simple and forget the Teflon tape. When you use Teflon tape with hose threaded parts, it can actually cause some of the problems that you're hoping to prevent. So don't use that. And this is all you need to get your hose bib connected to your irrigation system. If you come browse our website, you can see that we have a lot of kits. The kits that we have always contain a complete system. So that means it's gonna come with fittings, including the ones that you have to have, like the adapter to connect to the water source, the end caps to close off your mainline tubing run, and the complete head assembly. This means you don't even have to think about it. You can get a complete system with a single press of a button. All of the parts you saw today are included in the description below, including our easy to use and order kits. If you'd like to learn how to design your own drip irrigation system, check out the video right there. It's a step-by-step -step guide to easily design your own drip system. If you'd like to learn more about drip irrigation in general, check out our Getting Started with Drip Irrigation playlist right here.